Number 11. If you think Earth has rough weather, wait until you visit our closest planetary neighbor. Venus may be about the same size as Earth, but that is where the similarities end completely. Imagine stepping outside and instantly being hit by a wall of heat so intense that it could melt metal in seconds. The surface of Venus reaches an unbelievable 475 degrees Celsius. That is hotter than the surface of Mercury, even though Venus is farther from the Sun. You would not just sweat there, you would vaporize. And the air itself would crush you. The pressure on Venus is around 90 times greater than what we feel at sea level on Earth. It would feel like standing almost a kilometer underwater. If the heat did not destroy you, the weight of the atmosphere would flatten you like a tin can. And then there is the rain. The clouds are filled with droplets of sulfuric acid that fall through an atmosphere made almost entirely of carbon dioxide. Every piece of metal, glass, or plastic would corrode within moments. Even the most advanced spacecraft ever sent there only managed to last for about two hours before being melted, crushed, and dissolved. Scientists think Venus might once have been more Earth-like, possibly with oceans and a mild climate. But something went terribly wrong. A runaway greenhouse effect trapped more and more heat until the oceans boiled away and the surface became a furnace. Today it stands as a warning of what happens when a planet loses control of its climate. From orbit, Venus looks calm and beautiful, a glowing yellow marble in space. But beneath those clouds lies a world straight out of a nightmare, and things only get worse when we travel farther out to Io, a moon that never stops erupting. Number 10. If you thought Venus was intense, wait until you meet Io. This little moon orbits Jupiter, and on paper, it does not sound too terrifying. It is about the same size as Earth's moon, has no atmosphere, and is just one of many moons orbiting the gas giant. But Io is not just another rock in space. It is the most volcanically active place in the entire solar system. Picture a landscape covered in yellow, orange, and red. Not because of sunsets or pretty minerals, but because the ground is stained with sulfur and molten lava. Io's surface is constantly shifting, bubbling, and exploding. It is like someone turned up the heat on a pizza oven and forgot to turn it back down. Io has hundreds of volcanoes, many of which erupt with such force that they shoot lava fountains hundreds of kilometers into space. That is taller than Mount Everest stacked 20 times. Some of these eruptions can be seen with telescopes from Earth, and they never really stop. The moon is in a constant state of geological chaos. Why is it like this? Blame Jupiter. Io is pulled and stretched by the massive gravity of Jupiter, along with the tug of war from nearby moons Europa and Ganymede. This constant squeezing creates friction inside Io, and that friction turns into heat, a lot of it. On top of that, Io sits inside Jupiter's deadly radiation belt. If you were standing on the surface, you would receive a lethal dose of radiation in minutes. Combine that with the lava-spewing volcanoes, and you have a moon that looks like a sci-fi movie set, except it is very real and extremely dangerous. And just when you think it cannot get any worse, we are about to shrink the size and crank up the danger. Welcome to the world of neutron stars. Number 9. Alright, now things are starting to get really strange. Picture this. A star much bigger than our sun lives out its life, burns through its fuel, swells into a red giant, then collapses in on itself with such force that atoms are crushed and time itself seems to shudder. What you get is not a planet, not even a black hole, but a neutron star, and it is exactly as intense as it sounds. A neutron star is only about 20 kilometers across. That is roughly the size of a city, but packed into that small space is more mass than the entire sun. Imagine stuffing a hundred million skyscrapers into a single spoon. That is how dense it is. Just one teaspoon of neutron star material would weigh as much as Mount Everest. And gravity? It is off the charts. 200 billion times stronger than what we feel here on Earth. If you somehow found yourself falling toward a neutron star, your body would stretch into a spaghetti noodle long before you even got close. Scientists actually call this effect spaghettification, which sounds fun, but it is not. Neutron stars are also extreme in every other way. They spin incredibly fast. Some rotate hundreds of times per second, sending out pulses of radiation like cosmic lighthouses. These are called pulsars, and the magnetic fields they produce? Millions of times stronger than anything we can make on Earth. So, so just to recap, you have an object the size of a city, heavier than the sun, with crushing gravity, insane magnetism, and blinding radiation. And we are still not at the worst the universe has to offer, because there is one kind of neutron star that makes all the others look tame. It is called a magnetar, and it is a cosmic nightmare. Number 8. If a neutron star is terrifying, a magnetar is its unhinged cousin who doesn't play by the rules. This is what happens when the universe decides a regular neutron star is just not dramatic enough. 
Magnetars are extremely rare and incredibly dangerous, even from a distance. What sets them apart is their magnetic field. The strongest magnet ever created on Earth could lift a car. A magnetar's field would rip the atoms out of that car from halfway across the moon. Its magnetic strength is a thousand trillion times more powerful than Earth's. That number is so absurd it barely feels real, but scientists are very serious about how real the threat is. If you were somehow floating a thousand kilometers from a magnetar, your entire body would not only be torn apart at the atomic level, but your very existence would be rewritten. The magnetic field could scramble your molecular structure like a hard drive getting wiped by a giant cosmic eraser. They are also unstable. Magnetars can release flares that are so powerful, they have been detected from across the galaxy. One flare in 2004 blasted Earth with more energy than the sun produces in a quarter of a second. That flare came from 50,000 light years away and still affected satellites and instruments here. If a similar event happened much closer, it could fry our atmosphere in seconds. So, to recap, this is a star remnant smaller than a city hidden somewhere in our galaxy, capable of destroying anything that gets remotely close to it without ever touching it. And just when you think it cannot possibly get more extreme, we are about to take a trip to a place where light, time, and even reality itself gets swallowed whole. Welcome to the black hole. Number 7. This is where the laws of physics stop playing fair. Black holes are not just strange objects. They are regions in space where gravity becomes so strong that nothing can escape. Not ships, not signals, not even light. If you fall in, you do not just get crushed. You get erased from the known universe. Black holes begin their lives as massive stars. When these stars run out of fuel, they collapse under their own gravity. If the collapse is extreme enough, all their mass gets squeezed into an infinitely small point called a singularity. Surrounding that point is the event horizon. Once you cross it, there is no coming back. It is like the edge of a waterfall in space. You do not see it. You just pass it and then you fall forever. Time near a black hole moves differently. If you got close to one and looked back at Earth, you would see time speeding up. Years could pass out there while only minutes tick by for you. This is not sci-fi. This is real, measurable science. The gravity literally bends time itself. And if you tried to fall in, first your feet would feel more pull than your head. You would stretch into a spaghetti-like strand as you spiraled toward the singularity. Yes, spaghettification again. Only this time, it ends with complete disintegration. Some black holes are the size of cities. Others sit in the center of galaxies and weigh millions of times more than the sun. We have even taken a photo of one. The Event Horizon Telescope gave us our first glimpse in 2019. But believe it or not, there are black holes so powerful that they do not just swallow light, they light up the entire universe. That brings us to the quasar. Number 6. Now imagine a black hole so powerful that instead of hiding in the dark, it becomes the brightest object in the universe. That is a quasar, a monster at the center of a galaxy feeding so aggressively that it blasts out more energy than a trillion stars combined. Quasars form when a supermassive black hole starts consuming enormous amounts of matter. As gas, dust, and even stars spiral inward, they form a blazing hot disk spinning at incredible speeds. Friction heats the disk to unimaginable temperatures, and the energy released shoots out in all directions. Some quasars even fire out massive jets of radiation and particles that stretch across entire galaxies. To give you an idea of how bright they are, a single quasar in a galaxy billions of light years away can outshine every other star in that galaxy combined. If a quasar took the place of our sun, Earth would be vaporized instantly. And that is just from the energy output alone. Quasars are so luminous that we have used them as cosmic lighthouses to map the distant universe. They help astronomers understand the shape and expansion of space itself, but they are also warnings. Warnings of what happens when a black hole goes from quiet consumer to cosmic engine of destruction. They are beautiful, in a terrifying kind of way. Elegant spirals of light and radiation glowing at the edge of the observable universe. But standing anywhere near one would be like trying to survive inside the exhaust pipe of a starship. So what happens if you are not just near a quasar, but living in the chaotic heart of the galaxy that contains one. Things are about to get even more dangerous. Let's head into the galactic core. Number 5. At the heart of our Milky Way galaxy lies a region so chaotic and dangerous that it makes even black holes and quasars seem almost predictable. This is the galactic core, a place where stars race through space at blistering speeds, radiation floods every corner, and gravity pulls in every direction at once. Right at the center is a supermassive black hole called Sagittarius A. It has the mass of over 4 million suns, and everything in the galaxy orbits around it. Stars near the core do not drift gently. They slingshot through space at thousands of kilometers per second, constantly pulled and twisted by each other's gravity and the immense force of the black hole itself. If you could somehow stand near the galactic center, you would see a sky unlike anything on Earth. It would be packed with stars so densely that it might never get truly dark. But that beauty comes at a price. 
Radiation levels are dangerously high, fed by cosmic rays, X-rays, and the leftovers of long-dead stars. The environment is crowded and hostile. Explosions from supernovae are more frequent here, and the space between stars is filled with energetic particles that would tear through any living thing. Even the orbits of stars are unstable, constantly shifting under the influence of the black hole and nearby objects. We are lucky to be far from this madness, out in one of the galaxy's quieter spiral arms. But the galactic core is a glimpse into what happens when matter and energy are crammed together on a cosmic scale. And yet, even this swirling storm of chaos is just the prelude to something far more sudden and deadly. Now we enter a zone where destruction comes in the blink of an eye. Welcome to the Gamma Ray Burst. Number 4. Now we are entering the most violent neighborhood in the known universe. A place where destruction does not crawl towards you. It screams across the cosmos at the speed of light. This is the realm of the Gamma Ray Burst. Gamma ray bursts are the brightest and most powerful explosions the universe has ever produced. They usually occur when a massive star collapses into a black hole, or when two neutron stars collide. These cosmic cataclysms send out narrow beams of gamma radiation, so intense that if one were pointed directly at Earth from even thousands of light years years away, it could erase our entire atmosphere in seconds. We are talking about energy that outshines entire galaxies. For a brief moment, a single gamma-ray burst can release more energy than the sun will produce in its entire 10 billion year lifetime. These beams are focused and fast and they arrive without warning. No light show, no sound, just instant devastation. Scientists believe a gamma-ray burst may have caused one of Earth's past mass extinction events. The evidence points to a time when the ozone layer thinned dramatically and sunlight became deadly. While we cannot confirm it with absolute certainty, it is a chilling possibility that reminds us how vulnerable we really are. And these things are not rare. They happen somewhere in the universe almost every day. Most of them are far away, safely out of range. But the fact that they exist at all keeps astronomers constantly watching the skies. You cannot hide from a gamma ray burst. You cannot outrun it. You probably would not even see it coming. But if sudden cosmic violence is not unsettling enough, our next destination takes a darker turn. What if you were stranded in space, not by death, but by endless isolation. Let's talk about the rogue planet. Number three, now imagine a planet drifting alone through the universe. No sun, no light, no warmth, just endless night stretching in every direction. This is a rogue planet, and it is one of the loneliest and most unsettling places imaginable. Rogue planets do not orbit stars. At some point in their history, they were either violently ejected from their home systems or formed in isolation with no star to anchor them, they wander through space endlessly, frozen and forgotten. There could be billions of them in our galaxy alone. Without sunlight, the surface of a rogue planet would be unimaginably cold. Temperatures would drop so low that even nitrogen gas could freeze. There would be no days and no nights, just permanent airless darkness. Any atmosphere it once had would likely freeze and fall to the surface, turning the planet into a dead, icy shell. If you stood on one, you would not see a sky full of stars. You would see nothing just blackness in every direction. The silence would be total. No birds, no wind, no echoes. Just your own breath inside your helmet, assuming you had one. Some scientists believe that if a rogue planet had a molten core and thick layers of ice, there might still be liquid water trapped below the surface. In theory, it could even support microbial life, but that idea is purely speculative. The reality is far more terrifying. A rogue planet is space at its most empty a cosmic castaway drifting without purpose or end. But even a frozen tomb like this is still something. What if there was less than nothing? What if you entered a region so empty, so devoid of matter, it felt like the universe itself had vanished? Welcome to the Botus Void. Number two. So far we have explored deadly heat, crushing gravity, violent radiation, and eternal cold. But now we step into something more unsettling. Not a place full of danger, but a place almost completely empty. The boat is void. This region of space is over 300 million light years across and contains almost nothing. While a typical region that size would be packed with hundreds of thousands of galaxies, the Boota's void holds fewer than 60. That is not just empty, that is suspiciously empty. Astronomers first discovered it in the 1980s while mapping galaxy distributions across the universe. When they reached this region, they expected the usual cosmic clutter. Instead, they found a massive hole in the universe. The kind of hole that makes scientists double-check their instruments. Standing inside the Boota's void, if such a thing were even possible, 
would be like being surrounded by pure darkness in every direction. No galaxies, no stars, nothing. The nearest visible object could be hundreds of millions of light years away. It would be the ultimate isolation. This kind of emptiness does not just look strange. It feels wrong. Some researchers have even speculated that it could hint at unknown forces shaping the universe. While there is no confirmed explanation, one unsettling possibility is that this region was carved out by something we do not yet understand. A flaw in the cosmic web. A sign of something larger moving through. But whether it is natural or not, the boat is void is a haunting reminder that the universe does not just destroy. Sometimes it simply removes. And if that thought gives you chills, it is time to face something even more disturbing. What if the end of everything is not fire or silence, but the universe itself tearing apart? Let's talk about the big rip. Number one, we have seen what it is like to be crushed, vaporized, frozen, or stranded in nothingness. But none of that compares to this. The big rip is not just a place, it is a possible future. One where the universe itself turns against everything inside it. To understand the big rip, we need to talk about dark energy. This mysterious force is causing the universe to expand faster and faster. Galaxies are not just drifting apart, they are accelerating away from each other. For a long time, scientists thought this expansion might slow down or stay steady. But what if it keeps speeding up? What if dark energy grows stronger over time? In the big rip scenario, dark energy eventually becomes so powerful that it overcomes gravity, atomic forces, and even the bonds holding matter together. First, galaxy clusters are pulled apart, then individual galaxies, then solar systems, planets and stars are shredded next. Eventually it reaches the scale of molecules, then atoms, then subatomic particles. The universe is not just expanding, it is unraveling. Everything that exists is stretched until there is nothing left. No matter, no energy, no space, no time. Some models suggest this could happen tens of billions of years from now, but the idea itself is deeply unsettling, because it means that no structure is permanent, not even the fundamental rules of existence. It is not an explosion. It is not a collapse. It is a slow, unstoppable tearing apart of everything. The ultimate isolation. The ultimate silence. There is no level beyond this, no hidden realm deeper than the destruction of space itself. But there is one last thing to ask. Now that you have seen every terrifying corner of the cosmos, which one scared you the most?